Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is an old book cover that I want to turn into an ephemera storage book. But as you can see over there, I've managed to damage the spine of this book when I took out the pages. And although I think if I have some bookbinding supplies like bookbinding cloth and tape, I would be able to fix up the spine. But I, since I want to turn this into an ephemera storage book, I think that spine might be slightly too small for me. And I think I'm going to benefit by having a bigger spine. So I've decided in the end to get rid of the spine. But I'm going to keep the two covers because I really love the red border around it and also that gold embossing on the spine and i want to keep that and preserve that original part of the book and then the rest i'm going to cover up with some images so today i'm planning on building up my own spine and to do this i'm going to use a old box that i've got and i don't know if you're the same as myself but usually when i get deliveries or i order furniture and flat packs i always look at the box and if i see any potential in it i keep it and this was one of those i could completely see a book being made out of it because it had already the form and everything so I've decided to cut a part of it off. It's quite a long box, so it was wasn't something that I could do on camera. So I've just quickly cut a spine out and now I'm just measuring it up and trying to straighten out the edges and also get the right length. So I'm just doing some measurements there and seeing where I need to trim a few things off. I did make sure that this box the thickness of it is the same thickness as my cover so i'm just now at this stage using a utility knife and i'm just cutting off all of the um, edges and straightening it up you could also use a paper trimmer if you would like to, but I find that my craft mat and because of the thickness of this cardboard, it's just easier using a utility knife. I've got a smaller one as well, but I wouldn't recommend that that I usually use. It's, I think, an X-Acto knife. It's not really meant for this type of work. That smaller one is more for paper. So I'm using something that is slightly bigger and sharper to help me to cut through all of these covers. I'm also just straightening out the edges of these covers because I did a very quick cut and they weren't completely straight so I'm just straightening everything up and measuring it just having it roughly so I can work out properly you don't have to have it perfect it doesn't need to be perfect this is going to be my book that I use for my own ephemera to store it in so it definitely doesn't have to be perfect I think perfection is overrated but at least it needs to be very close so that it actually is structurally sound so now that i have straightened up everything and i'm quite happy with how it looks i have cut out a few pieces from my fabric and again you could use some book binding supplies like book binding cloth and book binding tape to make sure that it sits in a professional manner and it's nice and strong but those kind of supplies are quite expensive and also not everybody's got those things at home so today i'm just using normal fabric that i've bought from a fabric store you really don't need anything fancy you can make these books with things that you've got at home so what i've added on the spine was a combination of two glues one is an all-purpose glue which holds can hold a lot of things and the other one is a fabric glue and i'm just making sure that i'm using a combo of that it just makes me feel better i think it's going to hold on really well to the cardboard and also the fabric so the way that i've cut out these fabrics is to make sure that it's got quite a large flap that's going to go over to my two journal cover or oh, 
journal. <laughs> I keep saying journal. So those two flaps can go very comfortably over the two book covers. And again, I'm adding a combination of glue just to make sure that it is secure. And then I'm just using my hands and rubbing everything out. I've got a bit of a tissue there just to make sure that I soak up some of the glue that's coming out on the sides. But I'm just rubbing everything, making sure that it's adhered to the book cover and that all the air bubbles are out. And then I wait for that to dry a little bit. It doesn't seem in the video like I have waited, but I have waited just a few minutes for that to really dry. And then I'm moving on to my front cover and this uh, fabric that I'm going to stick on here is slightly smaller, the two flaps, just because I want to preserve that edge of the spine still. I really wanted to still include some of the original parts of the book, which doesn't seem like I have at this stage, but when I fold the book over, some of those areas get more exposed. So these two flaps aren't as big as the ones on the inside. Ideally, I think it is good to make this part also, those flaps a little bit wider. But for this part, I didn't. So now that everything's dry, there is some glue that's popped out on those sides. And I've just used some nail polish remover with an earbud and I have just rubbed the glue off and it actually worked so well and now these inside parts of the fabric I'm just using my fabric glue and sticking that in ideally again I would have liked that to be slightly longer to go over but um, you know unfortunately I didn't measure that properly and it didn't happen but I'm still happy with the way that it sits I've been using this book for the past week and it's not come loose and it's still folded over and it's it's really not giving me any trouble so I'm keeping it the way it is and now I'm going to decorate the front cover you will see that the light is slightly different I've decided to switch off my ring light because there was a lot of reflection from the cover and I was scared that that's going to be a little bit bothersome if you watch it and I'm going to decorate this cover with printables from 49 dragonflies and I have a discount code for you today if you would like to shop with her it's Cheeky Journals 2021 and that discount code will be available till the 15th of August 2021. So if there's anything that you have seen that you wanted to pick up, I think now would be a good time to do it. So I am first placing everything where I think I would like it to be. I'm not completely sure how I would like this front cover to be. So I think the best way is just to put everything out, move it, see how I would like it. And then I will start taking everything off and start with the sticking process. And I know that that butterfly was upside down and I'm going to keep it like that. I actually quite like it if writing or images aren't always the right way up i don't know i just love that look so i have gone for it and that is something that some people might want to do and others won't so you definitely don't have to do it that way that is just something that i really enjoy doing i think it's a little bit weird but um we're gonna go with it anyway so you know I'm watching this and I can see that book moving so much. I've actually chosen to decorate this cover in a very um, weird way. I think if you do this part, the best would be just to open up the whole book and then decorate 
um, the cover because when the book is flat it's going to be so much easier to stick those images on and you're not going to have any movement but I clearly wasn't thinking here I think what happened was originally when I had my ring light on I saw the reflection and I thought it's going to be better to start decorating the cover when the book's closed because there's going to be less of a reflection and um, then I actually decided to switch off the ring light and I completely forgot that I'm able to actually open the book now because it's not going to be an issue that reflection anymore but clearly um I was in the zone here and I didn't even realize it. Honestly, it didn't really bother me. But watching this video now and I see all that movement, I'm like, oh, you could have done it so much easier. But anyway, I'm just using the same glue that I've used for the fabric. But so I'm not using both glues here. I'm just using the all-purpose glue to stick these images on. And I love this glue because it doesn't cause any wrinkles in the paper or anything it sits really well on there and now I'm pulling out some distress ink and this splatter stamp and I'm just adding a few more things to this ledger paper and making it slightly more interesting I think I yes I end up stamping it three times and I think that's going to look really well with the mushroom and you just see those splatters peeking out and now I'm moving on to the focal image and I'm just making sure that this is how I would like it to be all these images on the front cover is um, from 49 dragonflies except that doily and I'm not quite sure about this shoe how I would like it to be but I do know that I want to include it because in the top right corner, I've already got that white paper in there. So you can really see the white and the black standing out. And I think I need another color like that on this cover for it to work. So I want to include it. I'm just not sure how I want to include it yet. And to bring in more of the black, I'm using some black ink and I'm just doing small splatters on the spot front cover so I've just waited for that ink to dry and now I am ready to continue on I have decided how I would like to stick that shoe and now I'm going to stick down the cheesecloth so if you are new to junk journaling you might wonder when I talk about printables what it is some people will call it printables Others will say digis or digital kits and basically what it is is a creator making printable ephemera or digital ephemera. So they make these digital ephemera by either scanning in old images or papers that have no copyright. They can also purchase images on the internet through certain websites, but you have to make sure when you purchase it that you've got a commercial license with that. Or you search the internet for images that's in the public domain, and then you will use some type of program like Photoshop or any one of those programs you get quite a few of them so you have to do your research on that and then you create your you use those images and the things that you've got and you create your own little ephemera or digital kit and you will usually sell that as a JPEG or a PDF file or there's a few other files that you could save it in as well. It depends on whoever's creating this digital ephemera. And then they will upload it on the private websites or Etsy stores and the public can purchase these digital files and they can print it at home on your own printer. It's a really economical and a very comfortable way of getting ephemera. And I think what's lovely about it is that you can Print, usually print it out as many times as you would like to and you can use it in different projects so you could use the ephemera to make book covers like decorate a book cover like I'm doing now can make tags out of the ephemera journaling cards 
it's really nice to use the ephemera in a few different ways have a few different opportunities to see what you can do with it compared to ephemera that you purchase from a store you can only use it once in your project and then it's finished if you want to use it again you have to go buy another pack and you can also print these printables on your home printer in different ways you can print it on depending on your printer of course you can print it on paper cardstock vellum transparent sheets sticker paper or even fabric so i'm planning to use this book to store in all my printable ephemera i do have a few stickers that i've already put in this book but it is mainly going to be for my printables So I'm adding the last few bits to this back cover and I'm just adding some extra little images to make this a little bit more interesting. I don't really want a focal point on the back cover. I just want a few little images that stand out from the background. So these are the mushrooms and the butterfly and some of these postage stamps that I'm sticking down. And I really love how those red mushrooms stand out against the paper. And I also wanted to add that because I think it goes well with the spine, the little bit of the spine that I've left open. And also I've left the red border on the book. I wanted to preserve that because I really liked how these images stand out with those original pieces from the cover. And I haven't added any splatters or um, ink to the back, but I might later on do it. As you can see now, my ring light's back on again because we don't have any problem with reflections happening. And I have wanted to use these two pages for so long, but I've been saving it for this book because I've, won I've known for, I think, the past six months that I want to turn this book into an ephemera storage book. And when I saw those pages, I knew they would fit in really well. So I've cut them to size and I am sticking them over the fabric. So that is another layer that goes over the fabric to hold everything down. And I am still preserving that red border around the cover. I really like how it stands out next to all these images. And it's something original from the book that I really like. And as you can see, there are some glue stains coming through on this fabric, but that's completely fine because it's all going to be covered up. 
So now I am putting that cover to the side to dry and I'm moving on to the pages that I would like to put inside of this book. And I have this huge atlas with big paper in and this is the only paper that I could find that would actually fit into my book that I'm making. I first wanted to use music paper that but that was way too small. So I have torn out a few of these pages and I'm just folding it in half. And now I am cutting off the excess paper that's going to hang out of the book. So my book is 24 centimeters by, let me just check, it's 24 centimeters in length and 18 and a half centimeters wide. So I'm just making sure that my paper is going to fit into the book. So I've cut the width and then I've put all the papers together in the signature over there and I have there will be slightly an overhang and I've just trimmed that off as well. And now we're moving on to the pockets. I'm using tracing paper because I want it to be see-through and I've cut out three different pockets. I've got this pocket that is 22 and a half centimeters in length and seven centimeters wide and I'm just sticking that on the side with some of the fabric glue that I've got. I find the fabric glue works the best because it doesn't really cause any wrinkles in the paper and I'm adding very very little glue. If you add too much I don't know the tracing paper just goes all yucky so adding just a little bit to keep it in place it doesn't have to sit it's, this is not going to be the main thing holding it. I'm still going to put it through the sewing machine. That's going to be the main hold. This is just to hold it in place so I can put it through the sewing machine. So I'm sticking the pockets in different ways on the page. So that first pocket that I've stuck in, that bottom one, is 17 centimeters wide and nine and a half centimeters in length. And then this little one that I'm sticking in is again 17 centimeters wide it's very important or for me I wanted to have them the same width and then it's slightly smaller it's four centimeters in length oh I hope those measurements made sense it's just for people that really wanted to know but basically you can make it any size that you would like you can take all the techniques and apply to any type of book and just um use your own measurements. So now I'm putting it through the sewing machine. Since I am sewing these pockets, I had to make sure that the pockets align up on the front and the back because obviously what you sew in the front is also going to go to the back. So I have measured and I've made sure that all the pockets align before I put it through the sewing machine. So as I was sticking it, I was um, using my ruler as you saw there to measure it out. So now I am going to my spine and I am measuring out where I would like the signatures to sit. In total, I've made four signatures. So I'm just seeing where I would like each hole to be. So I've made them the same length apart and um, so that they're all just nicely spaced in this cover. And now I'm using an awl just to make those holes in the spine. And I've got two or three books underneath that to make sure that it ju it's just easier when you sort of stick the all through and you know you've got three or four magazines underneath you so you don't damage your table but I also had the craft mat there so that's completely fine so now my signatures are all together they've I've sewn the pockets and I'm just making sure that the papers are sitting nice and snug and then I'm using four paper clips just to paper clip them together and keep everything in place now this is my template. I have already made sure that these holes line up with the holes in my cover and that everything is going to sit well in there. So I have those that template and I have made those holes. So I'm just using my pencil and making those marks. And I am just making it, it feels very faint. So I'm just going over it and just double checking my measurements to make sure that it's correct. And now I'm going to use this all again and I'm just going to poke my holes through. And of course be very careful for this bit that you don't stick your finger. I've done it many times so I'm quite confident where it's going to come through. But again accidents happen so quickly so every time I'm working with these kinds of tools I try and be as awake as possible and not be too tired. 
And now I'm going to use this beautiful blue thread as, um, as I'm sewing through the covers. So I've just measured three lengths of that and that should be enough. Now I'm using the pamphlet stitch. There are so many different stitches that you could use. And I am just pulling that through and through the middle hole. You can basically start in any hole, but I always tend to start in the middle. And I am also going through the middle hole of my cover. And the only thing that you need to make sure is that that little piece in the middle is not going to go through. So I always pull that and just make sure that I've got a, a decent amount of it still there in the middle. And now I'm going through the top hole. It doesn't really matter which one you go through. You can also go through the bottom one. And at this stage, I'm not pulling the signature tight to the cover. You don't really have to do it. It's just unnecessary. It's quite hard to line up the holes of the signature to the cover. So you can keep it loose. At the end, we will make sure that we pull everything taut and that it sits there. Um, nice and comfortably and that you don't have too much movement but for now we can just leave it as it is and make it easier for ourselves so I'm going back through the middle hole and then I'm going to do the same with the signature go through the middle hole I am sorry if the way that I'm turning the book um, is quite distracting but I've turned it many different ways to make sure that you can actually see what I'm doing and that my hands aren't in the way because it's quite difficult to film this part. So now I'm pulling off the paper clips and that is just to make sure that the papers can move around and that I can pull everything straight and also tight. So I'm, I've just pulled and made sure that everything is tight. I've looked on the outside of the cover to see if the string is tight over there as well. And now I'm just pulling each, each string so it's on either side of the string that's flat in the spine. And then I'm just doing a double knot and that is basically it. My first or well, my second signature is in. And I have off camera done the rest of the signatures because I've done it exactly the same way. And this is the end result. In these four signatures, I have roughly put some of my ephemera in already in four different categories. In the first signature, I've got some botanicals. So these are plants and flowers and any botanical things. So a bit of flora and those types of ephemera I've placed in here, like mushrooms, anything that fits with that. And I'm still busy adding some of my printables. It is quite a big job. So I've just roughly done a few to show you how it looks. And then in the second signature, I've got some vintage printables. And then in my third one, I'm going to, which you'll see shortly, I'll have labels, tickets, words, and numbers. And then in the last signature, I'm going to have any type of animal printables like any insects, butterflies, birds, those types of things. So this is very roughly how I've set up this ephemera book. I'm going to keep it like this for now and see how it works. And if I'm happy with it, I will be making some tabs and labeling those things so I can find those images easily. But I first want to see how it's going to work out. And that's my ephemera storage book. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.